Hey, Heather Zealand, you gotta... You gotta start the video. Hurry up. I think we're gonna need to make you a little faster. So let's do that. Let's make that video. We have a situation and that situation is that most of you are probably not doing everything you can to make football manager go as fast as possible. Because let's be honest, we all pretend to tell ourselves that that processing time in Football Manager allows us to be productive, that when it's simulating, we can go off and do something else and come back. It's not productive time. Let's just get on with the games and let me help you. First and probably most important thing and the most obvious thing that I've talked about multiple times before when it comes to making your game fast in this situation is this drop down arrow. The difference in speed between having all playable and all view only leagues is tremendous. So for every league that you add through the add remove league button that's behind my head, you have the option to make them playable or view only in the full game. And if you make them view only, you obviously cannot play in them. But when they're view only, you are able to simulate what's actually happening in the league. And there are games physically happening, but they're not happening with full club operation. The reserve leagues, the youth leagues, those aren't happening and really just the first team is in place and the youth intakes are limited to just a few best people usually coming through. Finding the speed you want to play at is your prerogative. I'm not going to lay out an exact roadmap in terms of playable and view only leagues. It's going to work for everybody. And compared to most computers that are playing FM, this thing is a super computer. This is like a $3,000 computer. Thank you guys, by the way. But I even play with some of my leagues on view only. Leagues that I know I'm never going to manage in and I don't necessarily need full youth intakes for. Like Brazil, I'm always going to leave unplayable because I want the entire youth intake for those teams. But if I put it on view only, I'm going to be able to get through things a lot faster on stream. I don't think I've ever heard a coherent argument for making every league in the game playable. You just shouldn't do it. It doesn't add to realism to have the second flight of Malaysia, you know, like fully operational. Why? So just take a few of these, put them on view only, and on you go. We're not actually going that far. We're just going up to the database thing in the corner and going down to advanced. So you've got different database sizes, and you'll notice that if you actually know how to click, uh, that the number of players in the game will change. The number of players is often incorrectly tied to a massive difference in game speed. I am prepared to make a supported argument that view only and playable is going to have a larger impact on the speed of your game than the number of players that are actually in the game. And it might come as a surprise to some of you that the number of players in the game can actually be completely untethered to the number of leagues in the game. Watch. I currently have in my base preset, because I listed my favorite club is Orlando City, I currently have seven leagues in the game. Large database is 44,500 players. If I go to advanced and I drop down continents and just add all of the continents in here, which does nothing on its own, but just brings up a bunch of option panels. And then I click on players of nationality or, you know, anything. I get every player from Africa, every player from Asia, every player from Europe, every player from North America, every player from Oceania, every player from South America. I have 371,000 players in the game and seven leagues. You'll see that your estimated game speed has gone down because 372,000 players is quite honestly insane. But with only seven leagues, the game is not going to run nearly as slowly as if you've loaded every league and just gone with, say, a small database. Getting an idea for 
test. Well, that's a test for another video, perhaps at another time to figure out exactly the kind of speed effect. But what I can guarantee you is that having literally every player in the game, which I actually know some people who will only play saves like this one, is equally as useless as having the Malaysian second division or Malaysia in general, unless you want to play there on playable. There's just absolutely no reason for it. But picking things like current internationals and that sort of thing to round out the feel of your universe, which you can do, by the way, in the custom database section, you just have to read the different options and make your selection and you'll end up with a few less players. It's not gonna cost you as much speed as you would think. Like if I switch from literally every player in the world to players from top clubs from each continent, I've added an important section of 30, 34, I hate math. Thirty-three thousand nine hundred players thereabouts. Really easy equation. Just had to do it in your head real quick. I'm still at two stars estimated game speed. And this estimated game speed, to be perfectly honest, is kind of a pansy. It goes down very easily. If you go through and then add every current international in the world, which is another option, I only added about 6,000 more players, and my game speed is still one and a half stars. The one that I use on my Twitch stream is only a half star game speed. And that moves pretty fast, so this is flying. So get in here, get comfortable adding players, and don't be too worried about that slowing down your game. If you want to round out the playing universe, you can add the players without adding the league. Save you some processing. Switch them to view only, please. Fancy transition. Now we're on to the save that I am currently streaming with Janetto. So look at some ways that after the save has started, you can help speed it up. First is an option that me being fairly OCD about the management of my, management of my team, I don't really use. But if you go to home, profile, and go on vacation, you can actually vacation through a portion of the off season or a mid season winter break or something like that and just choose which date you're going to come back on. You can get automatic responses from your assistant manager when it comes to things like transfer decisions and just go ahead and pick the day. Choose and whichever day you wanna come back from vacation, that's the day you'll come back. It's really not even that hard to set up to go on a trip like this. You just go to your players, go to transfer status, pick an asking price that you say, well, if I get this offer, I'd be willing to accept it while I'm on vacation. Say 22 million, that would be an outrageous sum. And you just go ahead and accept offers above asking price and reject offers below. Uh, if you have any players that you're worried about transfer moves and then just go on vacation. I know we've crossed some lines, maybe with the players, if you're a more experienced player of FM, you didn't know about that, but you're going, is this going to get more in depth? Yes. In fact, I am preparing to blow your mind. All right, I'm prepared. There's a thing once you've started the game called detail level. And it's honestly more important than you'd be led to believe the fact you probably don't know that it exists. You have to click the little FM up in the top corner and then whoop yourself down to detail level. And when you click on detail level, you're going to be presented with the amount of information that the game should be storing at any given time. In here, you actually can set it either individually or in a large sweeping motion. Maximum, continental, default, or minimum. You probably take a decent guess on what these three are. The default is going to depend uh, based off of your presets and the way you set the game up. Say you're super into international competition. So every competitive match in international competition, I want details on, right? So I get all competitive matches and every bit of international competition. Lovely. And then I can scroll through all the different countries that I have activated and make sure that no other country has got details going on. We have mixed from South America and only Colombia has got a certain amount of detail level to it. Detail level is going to affect things like whether you can watch the highlights from games, whether you can see 
who scored the goals and when, whether you can see the stats. Well, it's one thing to see the highlights. It's another thing to see the stats. And then you can see just kind of the basic stuff. Having no detail level at all will still allow you to see the score and still allow to see some of the basic stuff that's happened but if you want to actually be able to go inside of the game you're going to need a higher detail level and having higher detail level is obviously going to slow your game down so if you wanted to run a lot of leagues and a lot of players and make it go faster get rid of the details on things you don't care about actually seeing but i really have a pathological addiction to international competition in a made-up game and a lot of you seem to too we had like 950 people watching the 2022 world cup final watching it's awesome but in that live sports save on twitch where we watch all of the different big international competitions i have the detail level as high as it can go for all international competitions. But the club competitions, no, minimum. But wait, there's more. That's right, we're going up to preferences where you might have guessed there was one or two things that you missed while you were looking through or maybe you've never clicked preferences because it's scary and a pretty long word. When you open preferences, you're gonna see something that looks like this with whatever flag for language that you might have. Go over to advanced, click the drop down, and go to interface. Now there's something that's actually going to increase your load times on every single page in the game. I know I'm always sitting here telling you to untick caching. If you're trying to change logos or face packs or what have you, this time I'm telling you to tick it. Once you have all of your stuff set the way you want it, uh, if you're getting logos or face packs, tick caching. Your pages are going to load a lot faster. This is more important the worse your computer is. Because if your computer really struggles to load stuff, then once it loads the first time, it'll have a reference to go back and load it again. Because if your computer really struggles to load stuff, then once it loads the first time, it'll have a reference to go back and load it again. So you, Mr. Potato Laptop, this is for you. The next section we are going to is the match section here you're going to see a bunch of graphics options very obviously if you want the matches themselves to run smoother if you want them to load faster jack them down and you can play with dots on 2d if you want to if you scroll down a little bit you'll see a section that says speed to process other teams matches this is kind of an insanely well hidden little option here if it's not on fast put it on fast like if you if you're watching this video this might be the great mystery solve for you because you're like, wow, my game just seems to run so slow. This can torpedo you out of nowhere. I'm assuming the preset for the game is fast. I don't know. I've been inside the files so many times. Who knows what's happening? But set it to fast for your own sanity. Except on transfer deadline day, then you might want to go to more responsive. Save your own skin. Because this is literally referring to the the time it takes for this to respond. So like I click browse and it takes that extra second or two, or particularly if you're at a high processing moment, when you click browse, it'll take a while to come out. Uh, if you're on fast, that's what's causing it. If you're on more responsive, you'll be able to come out faster. What the changes have been made, but not applied. Uh, no, don't apply them. We're fine. Back to the beginning. Back to where it all began. I got to stop singing though, because there's actually one more thing in preferences that I want to show you. The one more thing in preferences is landing screens. Zealand, what's a landing screen? It's this thing you can use to engineer where you pop into when you click on players, teams, and competitions. This is the least important thing that I'm talking about, but it's just really cool for those people that like to kind of engineer smoothness. If you look at, you know, attributes are more important than just going to the generic profile when you click on a player, then you can set it to go straight to attributes. You can set it to look straight at a squad when you click on a team instead of having to go through the team page. And on the landing page for competitions, you can go straight to the stages instead of going to that stupid useless screen you go to when you click on competitions initially. It's like a bit of engineering work that you can have fun and tweak with. And I wish they had more options for like, when I come out of continue, this is what I open first. That's one of the features that I hope they include in future games. And when they do, you will already know to look for them because you're a genius. Congratulations.
Here's your medal. And alas, we have finished going through all of the different kind of hard-coded detail settings that you can change, but I've just got a couple of tips to throw on top. One, hit space. And this is something that just I forget to do all the time. When you're going between things in your inbox, the space button will take you to the next one. You don't need to hit acknowledge for scouting reports, just hit space. I'm still training myself to hit space, and it's really hard because I want to click and waste my own time. When you want to interact with a player, right-click them, and you can do basically anything from here that you would do by clicking on them. It can save you from having to load a page which in itself, in particular, if your computer sucks, is a massive time saver. And then when you're on a list of players and you want to interact with all of them, you hit Control A. I was just trying to highlight 4,400 players. Apparently that takes a little bit of time. How dare you, computer? I'm gonna write a sternly worded letter to Intel. Then if you wanna select just a certain group of players, click the first one, hold shift and click the last one, and you will select that entire group. This works in things like team talks too. If you wanna give a particular type of, woo, congratulations, motivation, you probably give that to your assistant manager. Don't do that, but that's for another video. I, I think we're done here. Those are all the hard-coded things you can do to make your game run as fast as possible. As long as you have a grasp of playable view only and the number of players, just remember that everybody likes to play the game at their own pace. So if you like the speed your game is moving now, don't feel like you need to move it in any particular direction. If you feel your game is moving slow, understand you're probably going to have to give a little up in terms of detail or leagues or number of players, most likely leagues from playable to view only, to make the type of speed that you want happen. Get to a point where you get comfortable, Use the couple of shortcuts that I showed you at the end to make sure you get through screens faster and have to load less screens. And when you do load screens, it's all cached and you're going to be flying. You're going to be flying, hopefully, right down into the description to check out Reese's new YouTube channel. He's the guy that edits this channel. He's wonderful and he makes videos about how he edits. So if you're watching this and like, wow, that's cool, you can learn how to do it. He'll see you there. I'll see you on Twitch. Have a wonderful day. Zealand. Out hoping for a haircut at some point and like a shave and literally anything that makes me look like I have a home. Firm handshake, firm handshake. Yeah, man, good game. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the streamer showdown, season three, Zealand Shannon, everybody.